But anyway, like I said, the other day they were talking about Rakim. Um, he was trending because I think um, the rapper Jim Jones said that he wanted to do a versus with Rakim, against Rakim. Like, oh, Lord. And I like Jim Jones, but come on. Y'all just be saying anything out here. Come on, y'all just be saying anything. Y'all know ain't nobody gonna do no, no verses with no damn rock him. Come on now. And I think they, they were people were trying to remind folks of Rock Him's legacy, because there's a lot of young people out here, understandably, who don't really understand Rock Him's significance. Where are my young people who don't really know the, the significance of Rock Him? Yeah, Eric B and Rock M, yes. Yeah, Jim Jones was like, yeah, he want to do a versus with Rock M. Like, I like you, Jim, but damn, brother, come on now. <laughs> what are you saying? Y'all you know, just don't be just don't say anything just to be saying anything. Come on, man. We're talking about Rock M. That's the God MC. Rock M for the, the young folks. Come on, Rock M. This is a brother who was 30 years ahead of his game. Rock M was 30 years ahead of the game. Rock M came out in 86. Rakim was so pivotal to hip hop, Rakim neutralized the career of almost everybody who came out before 1986. Rakim single-handedly neutralized almost every other rapper who came out before 1986. Only a, a couple survived Rakim. Only a couple of people who were out before 1986 survived Rakim. Dougie Fresh survived, but Dougie Fresh, he was doing a beatbox, so that was something totally different. The novelty of that was something totally different, so that's how he got a pass. LL Cool J survived. He came out in 1984, and he survived Rakim because LL was just that thorough. And LL had, um, you know, he had the Def Jam Columbia machine behind him, but Rock, uh, LL almost didn't survive. All right, L LL almost did not survive Rockin' because that Walking with the Panther album, even though it went platinum, again, the tides had changed. The tides had changed in hip hop right after Rockin came out. Yeah, Kumo D, he survived, but he survived because he went solo. Kumo D wasn't solo, he was with the Treacherous Three. So then he came out as a new artist, so he survived. Kara's One came out in 86, okay? Kara's One came out, they came out the same time. The Slick Rick went solo, basically, and did his solo thing. You know? But Rakim, all the other rappers that came before Rakim, he pretty much neutralized their career. Now, Ice T survived because Ice T, again, the novelty of a West Coast rapper, he came with something completely different. He brought in the West Coast. That was a different thing. So you had to bring in a whole different thing in order to survive Rock Him. But the people in New York, most of them did not survive. Grandmaster Flash and those guys, unfortunately, they really didn't survive Rock Him. A lot of those guys didn't survive Rock Him. The Fat Boys, the novelty wore off real quickly. But um, even Run DMC really didn't survive Rock Him. Even Run, yeah, Run DMC did not survive. Even Run, not Run, DMC said when he when he first heard Rakim, he was like, you know, I'm balling out, you know, I'm riding in the Cadillac, I'm balling, you know, I'm on top of the world. He said somebody let him hear Rakim. He was like, it's over for us. DMC said it when he heard Rakim. He said it's it's over for us. He knew it is over. Curtis Blow didn't survive. They did not survive. He neutralized everybody, almost everybody before 19, whoever came out before 1986, he neutralized them. Um, uh, da, 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 Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, all those groups. Rakim came out with such an insane flow. Not only was his flow insane, the lyrical content was insane, the knowledge, and he was breaking down consciousness. Remember, Big Daddy Kane, all, they came out around the same time. So that's how they survived. Public Enemy came out around the same time. That's how they survived. So there, there had to be a consciousness in your joint. You know? 
There had to be a consciousness in your rhymes. Public Enemy came with that consciousness. Big Daddy Kane came with the consciousness. Understandably, listen, a lot of folks don't realize when you listen to N.W.A.'s album that came out uh, um, straight out of Compton, when that came out, a lot of that, man, that had a social conscious um, air to it. The Straight Outta Compton album, that had a socially conscious attitude to it. F the police. That was a conscious record. It was very vulgar and graphic, but there was a consciousness to it. Yeah, Houdini didn't survive. A lot of those big groups, Houdini didn't survive Rakim. Yeah, a lot of them, the big guys, they did not survive Rakim. Rakim neutralized a whole bunch of folks and then changed everybody's flow. When Rakim came out, everybody stopped yelling. Remember, before Rakim, everybody, everybody was very hyped up. Yeah, Nas came out in the 90s, yeah, again. And look at the comparisons. Um, Nas was clearly influenced by Rakim. And look at Nas and Rakim. These are two of the best MCs ever. They come from jazz backgrounds. Rakim comes from a jazz background. Nas comes from a jazz background. Their flow has that jazzy, syncopated thing where you're just dipping in and out. You're riding the beat real crazy. That's from jazz. Yeah? Yeah, Rock, Rakim wasn't a big cursor. He didn't curse a lot. His wordplay was so damn intricate, he didn't have to curse a lot in his records. That's the golden era. They ushered in the golden era. Yeah? But KRS-One didn't come out before Rakim, I don't think. They came out the same time. I'm telling you this. They came out the same time. They came out the same time. Yeah? So we better understand how important Rakim was to the hip-hop game. You say, Nas is overrated? Stop it. Nas is one of the best in the game. Nas is far from overrated. He gets... He doesn't get enough props. Yeah? Nazir Jones does not get enough props. And shout out to my brother Nas. He has a documentary coming out about the Supreme Team out of Queens. I, that's going to be on Showtime. I cannot wait to see that. That looks very, very good. So y'all need to check that out. I really want to see that. Big L, yeah, Big L. A lot of them got their styles from Rakim, man. EPMD got their style from Rakim. All right? A lot of folks got their style from Rakim. Can't sleep on that, brother. There, it would be good to have a documentary about Rakim, just talking about how thorough he is. Yeah, MC Shan did not survive Rakim. MC Shan didn't survive Rakim either. Yeah? Yeah, Nas is a legend, man. And still relevant, still doing his thing. Man, let's, let's keep that thing 100. Let's keep it a buck. You know, sometimes people just be hating just to be contrary. You got to stop that. Sometimes cats just be hating just to be damn contrary. You know, stop all that. I hate, I hate folks that get to attention whoring and just saying something off the wall just to get attention. Yeah? Don't be that dude. Yeah? Because, see, we got to understand, sometimes you don't have to address a lot of troll stuff. Yeah, I do. I really want to start getting into some hip-hop documentaries. I, I really want to get into that. I really do want to get into that. But, um, like I said, don't, don't engage bad faith arguments. Sometimes niggas just be arguing in bad faith just for the sake of being contrary and honorable.